on the dynamic purchasing system which was introduced. And um, Karen from uh, Health Watch, Councillor McManus and myself became aware of this during the task and finish work we're doing on continuing health care funding and how it applied and applied and where our new framework is, how it's applied over. And we became aware that this system had been implemented again. I think this does, um, and we can have a discussion about what constitutes a significant change in, in delivery of service, but I do think this constitutes a significant change in the delivery of service. And it was considered brought to committee in advance. However, we're pleased to have the report here today in front of us, and we've got uh, Tracy Cole. Tracy's off scene. Okay, and okay. so we've got um, Shall I introduce? Yeah. <laughs> So, so who's going to introduce I will introduce them, so okay. the chair. Um, so we have with us today Chair um, Brian Dexter, Jason Rogan, Debbie Thwaites and Julian Fryer, who are from the Minden and Language Commission Support Unit. Um, dynamic Purchasing System um, is an automated procurement system that is utilised in terms of nursing home and care home placements around patients who have continuing health care needs, or assess the house continuing health care needs. And it's provided across five clinical commission groups in Cheshire and Wirral. So you are clearly looking at its usage in terms of Wirral, but it will also apply to West Cheshire, East Cheshire, South Cheshire, and via all clinical commission groups. So um, if this legal stretch, I'm going to hand over to the experts. Uh, 
due to a genuine reason. Could you explain what a genuine reason is? Yeah, so um, an example of that would be, for example, um, perhaps um, a, a fellow family member passed away in a particular care home, and um, clearly they wouldn't want another family member placed in that home. Um, so we'd always take that into, into account if they had a particular preference. So there was a home that they, that they would like their family member to go to. What we do is we ask that, that, that the uh, referring clinician includes that on the patient contribution form and makes the, um, the CHC nurses aware of that so that when it is placed on the system, um, we can try and make sure that that particular home is contacted and does um, respond to the requirements in terms of saying, do they have a bed? Can they meet the clinical needs? And what costs they would, uh, to would be put against that Okay, um, and then the other one is around um, one that really, really did concern us, um, and that is when um, a family or a person um, turns down a home, um, and I understand that they get three choices, three, three opportunities turned down, and if they do turn down those three, and homes offered are saying they can meet the clinical need of the person, but if they do turn down those three offers for whatever reason, um, then the continuing health and health program is withdrawn, and as they're not able to eligible for local authority funding, it is deemed that they will be on self funding. If that's the correct interpretation, is it? Are you happy for me to take that, or Jason, do you want to answer that one? So, what, what we do is we make reasonable offers, um, and there will always be exceptional circumstances. Um, so, you know, the system it isn't a case of this is it, and you know, we can, we can go outside of the system. Um, but it is true that if you know a particular um, family have a very very strong preference for a particular home, if there are other homes that are within you know reasonable distance and of a reasonable price and can meet those needs, then you know we wouldn't be able to offer. Um, you know, if there was another home that was say twice as expensive, and there were other homes that were of a good quality that could meet the needs in a reasonable distance that could provide that care for much less. <laughs> Then you know the, the CCG is that, if that is how it stands. If all reasonable offers have been refused, then in a, in a sense that is what the patient is, is family is choosing to do. That has been, in fact, as far as I'm aware, that's never that has never happened. Yet. A letter has been issued in Wirral, um, but whether the family have decided that they are going to continue to refuse the offers that have been made. Um, because I'm aware, yeah, I don't think that, that the response to that letter has uh, been received by the CCG. So there, has, there is one family where that warning has been given in, in the first four months of the past. Okay, but Leslie and Tony, and then Karen, do you want to ask anything? Because I know that you're. I've just had to listen to what Tony said. Yes, thank you, Chair. I mean, I mean my question really might, might sound rather naive, really, but I mean, you've opened up and you've talked about family. Who advocates for the people who don't have family? I mean, there are a lot of people quite clearly. You know, the patient has um, has capability, I and mean, the patient, you know, it's up to the patient. His, his, his preferences will be taken into account, and they have the decisions to whether they want to accept the uh, the offered home. Um, this is not just for care homes; it is for care at home as well. Yeah, well, well, just take me through then. Uh, um, I don't want to hold up the commission's hand, but, but just take me through a scenario then, where there's an older person. No family, they might be confused. Quite clearly, they're ill. You know, they're, they're worried where they're going to end up. And then we present them with, you know, words like when you're entitled to access the, the dynamic purchasing system. You know, it sounds yeah. horrific. Really. There is a patient's information. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, we've always, we've always talked about on this committee, and I've come back onto it after um, a number of years. I've thought about everything should pass sort of a plain English test. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking of yeah. a young person, confused, mm -hmm. ill, deteriorating, you know, mentally and physically, faced with something like this. Who's going to make that decision then on their behalf if they don't have family or friends to advocate on their behalf? Are we okay to come back on that? Um, so this report that's in front of you today, it's obviously for this audience. Yeah. We wouldn't send, you know, words like this out to families. There is a patient's information leaflet. Um, that has been through the readers group and the referring clinician, so the um, clinician that's you know uh, involved in the care of that patient at that time, um, that 
um, when they've gone through the CHC process, and it looks likely that they are going to be eligible for CHC. It's that referring clinician's responsibility to explain, to, to, you know, to go through the leaflet with them and basically explain that the NHS um, will choose um, a, 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 a care provider for you. They can choose whether they prefer to be cared for at home or whether they'd like to go into a, a nursing home. So they do have that choice um, you know, to make up front. But they'll be, be explained to them that the NHS will, um, will source a care package based on their clinical needs or find a provider that first and foremost can best meet their needs. Um, and that those offers, you know, that, that that will be put out to find out what the um, who could, you know, what, what availability there is there. Um, and um, if what what we can do is obviously take will ask about any preferences that they may have um, and take that into account. Such as, you know, if next of kin perhaps if there are, are family members, um, if next of kin perhaps lives in another area of the borough, then we'll try to place them with the preferred to be near a particular family member. Obviously, if they haven't got family, they may wish to be near their home address so that friends can visit, for example. So it's things like that with, that we'd explain to them and try and you know, understand what, what will best meet their needs when we, uh, when we do put that out to the market. Okay, I'm take turn in the Karen. Sorry, it's just people on the leaf list. Because the leaflet, I don't know, the, I don't know if you've seen it, I think you've seen it, oh, yeah. it's, it is actually going out for a review again because Tracy contacted me, it's very one-sided, it's very the benefits of the uh, provider, if you like, not the benefits of the, of the person, it's a bit scary and it does, it's very it's blunt, blunt. <laughs> it's very blunt, it talks about you will be, you'll have to fund this yourself if you don't take the choices that are offered. So that is now done out again. That, that was what the alarm does for me. And we have responded to that, that feedback and uh, we'll be looking to, to amend the leaflet. I'm sorry if this seems, um, I apologise if this seems naive, but it is a genuine question. Um, I don't understand the dynamic uh, I mean, in the particular context. I don't understand it in engineering, but um, and I don't quite understand real time either. Can you just say what you mean by deducibly inefficient? Is that all you mean? The, di the dynamic nature of the system is that a new provider can come on board at any time. So it's live. You can, so say for example, if I set up a new care at home um, organisation business tomorrow, Previously, I've had to wait for a gap in the framework or I've had to try and get hold of Brian's number and try and ask how to get on the framework. Now all I need to do is log on to, a, to the system and enrol as a new provider to prove that I've got, you know, that I'm registered with the CQC, prove that I'm financially stable and that I've got the correct staff, etc. And then the CCG will review that and uh, hopefully you know, pass me to, to come on board. So it's dynamic in the nature that you can come on at any time. Equally, if there are any concerns expressed about a particular home or provider, straight away it's just one phone call, a press of a button, and that home will not be able to, um, to respond to any new, new office of business until we're you know, sufficiently assured um, that care is, is safe and quality is, is what we would expect. So again, it's dynamic in that way, and it's, it's live, and we can, we can um, change the Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to say, David, but I have to say that there's a theme that runs through comments that come made at this committee, because we look in great detail at um, standards in care homes and predominantly care providers, and um, CQC uh, it's back to a minimum standard. Um, what, what I think would be a concern in this is that um, that big element of choice is removed, and what is replaced is a um, very limited choice for, uh, to choose from homes that, um, that provide care to a limited term basic standard. And that has been something that which has concerned the whole council. We've passed resolutions to the council, and some motion about this and the council. Um, we would be liking to, to people would be very much wanting to see standards being pushed up, pushed up, pushed up. This looks like a situation where they will keep standards on the bottom. Yeah. Um, but I will take um, I will take Dave and then Wendy. In terms of the decision to make a placement, um, there's, the, there's an algorithm in place and half of that algorithm is the CQC rating itself. Yes, I know we understand the CQC rating, so that's a concern to us. Thank you. So, um, the, so the, 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 there is a the, 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 there is an interest there for people to actually improve the CQC rating to get a better school. We'll come back to this on another occasion, but we do understand the difference between the 
the red rating that our council use on the CQC inspection regime. But David. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it was something that Council Reading picked up on. Uh, I must admit it, it sort of lurked in the back of my mind and there's something a bit sense that you all seem lovely and cuddly people. I'm sure you're very well caring. <coughs> I do genuinely worry that we have a situation where we have a single individual here. Um, somebody who may be in the early form of dementia, or whatever, whatever their, their, their particular issue is. And I cannot for the life of me think that there won't be some expeditious way of getting them to do what we want because they are on their own. So my question really is, are we looking at having some patient champions? Or if we aren't, why aren't we availing ourselves of charities, age concern, whatever? You'll forgive me for my ignorance and not knowing the, the, the format, but I am genuinely concerned about that poor elderly person who feels that they've been pushed into a particular direction because it is just suitable for the Okay, authority. Mm -hmm. um, um, obviously there are concerns and almost where, where the loop um, at point 17 where the report says uh, due to a genuine reason, it, it makes me wonder what a non-genuine reason looks like, uh, so that what the experience of a family would be. Um, just thinking about 10 miles and um, the River Mersey and things like that, whether you've managed to sort that with the Winkle Lab. Yeah. Now, here's, here's a, this is a this is a report that uh, again 
what's the problem what will drive this service. Okay, the committee happy for this to be reproduced in a, in a form that's acceptable to everyone? Yes? I would say that I did discuss the matter with Tim Welch, who is the finance officer and assistant chief executive, in my discussion at all about staff. But I'm aware from the CWP to an excellent function for users of the service, which explains things in terms for users of the service and the families. I hope that discussions will involve those and that they are included as part of the user. Okay, thank you. Possible to be addressed 
and this aspect is dealt with in the time scale and fixed in with our need to get the core strategy and the spatial strategy and all the other 